How's it going guys? It's me Gavin CMD and today I have a question for you. Do you like math? Well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be the one doing the math today anyway. Um, but today I'm talking about a topic that has interested me for a while um, and it's kind of conflicted some people in the competitive community and there's been a lot of talk about it as well. Um, essentially it's what rotate do you take from fourth to fifth zone. Fifth zone is the first half and half. Um, so I wanted to talk about that today and really break it down. Um, now, please understand a lot of the math that I'll be doing is pretty approximate. I try my best to do correct calculations. Um, and for the most part, if we keep the same scale, um, it's gonna add up. It's gonna you just multi pretty much multiply the scale by whatever and it's gonna work out um now i did play in photoshop a little to help visualize things because i know some people need visualizations especially for the math i'm about to do um so with that said let's get going and hopefully by the end of this video you guys will know whether you take center zone uh fourth circle or you play edge and gamble a bit and before we get into the video i'm sorry you can probably hear my pc it's pretty loud um also make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash gavincmd i'm live almost every day um i plug that in every video uh pretty much you can watch my competitive fortnite journey yada 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 but for real this time let's get right into the video now we'll take a look at chapter one's map first um but for your reference, the chapter 2 map is about 67.76, the size of the previous map. So the map, if you just pretty much scale everything by that number, it's gonna end up being the right thing, if that makes any sense. Um, but we're playing with the chapter 1 map, using that for a scale, um, that's gonna make things a bit more easier just because everything will be on a more usable um, and friendly scale. So, let's pretend each tile is 250 meters, and that's exactly what it was for the chapter one map. So I simply went into Photoshop and selected um, the fourth zone circle, um, and I had a feeling that you would be able to fit about four of them in a 250 meter radius, which is one tile on the map, and I was correct. Knowing that you can fit four circles evenly in the fifth zone in one tile, that means that the diameter of fifth zone is half of 250, which is 125. Now, that would make the radius of 5th zone 62.5. This means the circumference of the 5th zone by doing 2 pi r would be around 392 meters. Now, to find the measurements of the 4th zone, that was a bit more tricky. I actually had to go on to Epic Games and look at a couple change logs and figure stuff out myself. But what I was able to figure out is that each circle is approximately 48% of the size of the previous circle. And if the fifth zone is approximately one-fourth of a tile, which is 250 meters, um, that means the diameter of the fourth zone using the 48% rule would be around 245 meters. That will put the diameter at, of course, 245 meters, and that will put our radius at around 122.5 meters, and our circumference at approximately 769.69 meters. Well, that's cool and all. We know that actual approximate sizes of every single circle, but what do we actually do with that information? Well, we know that the fifth zone it's obviously half and half, half in, half out. So with that said, we pretty much need to know how many of fifth zone can we fit around the circumference of fourth zone. 
Now, believe it or not, there actually is a relative formula for this. It would be capital R equals lowercase um, r divided by sine of pi divided by n. Where the capital R is the big circle, or, you know, fourth zone, and the lowercase r is the small circle, fifth zones, and that would be the radius. And then n is the number of small circles that are touching and are 50% in the zone, 50% out of the zone on the circumference. This means the maximum amount of small circles can be calculated by using the inverse of that formula, which would originally look like pi divided by n equals the arc sine of r divided by r. But in this case, since we don't know what n is, it's simply n equals pi divided by the arc sine times r slash r, radius slash radius. We also know that sine multiplied by pi divided by n is radius over radius, too. So with that said, let's start by finding radius over radius. With that said, you would have to do... 62.5 divided by 122.5. That would get us 0.510204081633. Now, if we find the arc sine of that, it would be around 30.677424 degrees. So then we can divide that number we just got. Uh, which will just simplify to 30.67 and then we divide that by the number we got by dividing the radiuses which is 0 0.51 uh, and that will give us 60.12775104 um, but we can move the decimal point over 1 to make that 6.012 then we would simply do pi divided by 0 0.12 times 62.5 divided by 122.5, or you can make it simpler by just doing pi divided by pi times 6.012. But this just gives us 6.012 anyway. But I just wanted to finish the formula. So with that said, that means we can fit approximately 6 fifth zones around the circumference of fourth zone. And by looking at the example I had in Photoshop, you can see that that's almost exactly what we get when we just play in Photoshop and align stuff. So not only did Photoshop back us up, but, you know, we did the math. Anyway, but what does this all mean? Well, that means you have about a 16% chance of getting fifth zone by playing edge. That doesn't seem too good, right? Then you have to remember that you have a 0% chance of getting zone if you play center. But that doesn't even matter. Because if you play center zone, you will always be the radius of the fourth zone minus the radius of the fifth zone, which would be approximately 60 meters away from the safe zone. Using this info, we already know that you have about a 16.63 chance of being max distance away from zone, and that means you'll have a 49.89 chance of being more than 60 meters away from zone. So that means you have about a 50% chance of completely screwing yourself over. But that doesn't mean you have a 50% chance of being 100% safe. You still have to take in consideration the chances of you even moving at all, which would be a 83.37% chance. Using this info, you can safely say that playing center zone is definitely going to minimize your RNG. Uh, the most. 83.37% actually. Um, but what do you actually do with this information? Well, as an IGL, you have more time to prepare the route, right? If you're playing edge zone, you have to wait until zone pops up to finalize your plan. While if you're an IGL, 
um, whether duos, trios, or squads, um, if you're playing center zone, you can just say to yourself, well, we know we have to move, so let's figure out what we're going to do in each different path. Well, if you're playing edge zone, you don't even know if you're going to have to move to begin with. Now, guys, I know this is all approximated, but really it's only give or take five to seven meters. So I think by knowing this information that I've just told you, you can really decide as an IGL what you actually want to do. Like I said, the odds are you really want to play center zone. And the only reason why I did this video in the first place is because I knew there was a lot of controversy about it. No one really knew what to do, and no one had really done the math. So I took the time out of my day to do the math. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Um, my name is Gavin CMD. Remember, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash Gavin CMD to see my competitive growth throughout the, the past couple of months, you know? So, uh, take it easy, guys. I'm bad at outros, you, you can tell.